Ken Danby's uh, realistic images have gone way beyond technical skill and have become icons of our culture. He adds a mysterious force to uh, familiar and cherished themes, and uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with at the crease or uh, face-off or uh, lacing up, which capture his fascination and ours with winter sports. Somehow Ken manages to stop the action and the emotion in some kind of archetypal moment and then renders it with uh, astonishing attention to detail. So here he is, the man behind the brand, Ken Dandy. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Moses. I want to thank Moses for the invitation to be here sharing this fabulous f uh, conference with you. Everything that I paint is a result of my personal vision and experience. But that doesn't mean that everything that I paint is as I saw it. What you will see is what I want you to see, not what I saw. Everything that I respond to in my work is a result of a lot of analysis, a, a lot of restructuring, a lot of uh, synthesizing, uh, what to leave in, what to take out, what to diminish, what to emphasize. It's a wrestling match that I enjoy going through. As I said, I'm obsessive. Uh, and this is the way I prefer to work. A lot of people will say to me now and then, it looks so real, uh, you, you'd think it was a photograph. Well, A, it's, I'm not a photorealist. And B, uh, the assumption that it looks like a photograph is rather superficial. There is an awful lot of, as I say, restructuring going on. But uh, there's an awful lot of thinking that goes on as well. And I enjoy that, thinking. You will notice that there are, over the years, images of hockey. Hockey has long been a, uh, an element of my life. I grew up in Sault Ste. Marie, and I still belong to an or association uh, called the Guelph Good Timers versus Old Timers. We're good timers. And I'd like to relate a story to you that actually is a true story. Uh, one of my teammates many years ago was discussing the merits of us wearing fully protective equipment. And he said, Ken, he said, Ken, you're an artist. You've got to protect your hands. You have to wear gloves. Yeah, I said, yeah. He said, I'm a lawyer. There's no way I could play without a helmet. It had never occurred to me that as long as my hands were protected, my head was expendable. <laughs> this underlined for me the fact that he had a rather shallow impression of what an artist is and what an artist does. In his mind, I'm sure an artist is someone who has a talent and simply watches it unfold or watches it perform. And that's not too far away from the average impression that society has. Artists are entertainers, and we perform, and we just go through these things because we have a talent. And uh, the arts are rather uh, superfluous in so many ways in that respect. I recall a conversation I had many years ago with one of the, the, the most important leaders in this country. And he said, Ken, he said, I, I don't know anything about the arts. And I responded diplomatically, well, who really knows? And he didn't even listen to me as he carried on to say, but my wife does. Well, what he was telling me is that it was all right for the wife to indulge in the arts, but he had more important things to consider. I've also spoken with other community leaders and politicians who have said, well, uh, I've grown up with the, uh, without the arts being a major part of my education, and I think I turned out all right. <laughs> That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> my point is this. The arts are undervalued. The arts are given short shrift.
if we want to look after the future, if we want to hope for a better future, the arts had better find their rightful place in our educational system. We want our youth to grow up being able to think in both sides of their brain. If we want them to be more sensitive to the environment, if we want them to know themselves and how to relate better to others, and if we want them to have a, f a, f a better advantage in making determinations and decisions every day of their lives, if we want them to respect and enjoy the quality of life that they're entitled to, that we want them to have, we have to include the arts as a major ingredient in our, uh, in our scholastic system. What do the arts offer? Very briefly, I'll give you a very quick definition. How many of you, very briefly, how many of you have ever heard the term, uh, trust the force? <laughs> what it means is trust your intuition. It's parallel to go with your gut feeling. It's parallel to trust your instinct. And that comes from the right hemisphere, the right side of the brain. Controls the senses, uh, responds to the senses, subconscious thinking, intuition, instinct. We train the, right, uh, the left side of the brain, we allow the right side of the brain to learn by serendipity, by osmosis. There is a subject that can teach the right side of the brain. The arts. It's the only subject. It's not as if it's a better subject. It's the only subject that will teach the right side of the brain. I'm not saying that artists are important. I'm not saying what I do is important. What I'm saying is that the arts are important for the future well-being of our civilization. That's how strongly I feel about it. What I do is significant to me. <laughs> to me. Uh, I do it because it pleases me. If it pleases others, that's a bonus. I would do it regardless. However, once in a while, I get some feedback, which is profound at times. I'm about to close with this story. Last year, I had a major exhibition in Toronto, actually, and a young couple came to me with a six-year-old boy. And they wanted me to hear from the six-year-old boy what he had said to them in the gallery while they were looking at one of my paintings of water. And after much persuasion, he spoke up, and he, this is what he said to his mother in the gallery while looking at one of these paintings of water. He said, Mommy, I can hear the water. <laughs> I, I, my heart skipped a beat out of the mouths of babes. Thank you very much. <laughs>